Hey, we're back, and Dr. Bill is with us tonight. He's with us once a week here. Very honored to have him with us as always. We cover a, a wide array of topics and try to keep you up to speed on, on all of them. This, uh, this issue of Fukushima, of course, is continually and will be probably for the rest of our lifetimes the most dominating story, although you'll never see it in the U.S. media. It is uh, absolutely unbelievably bad and getting worse all the time. But we'll get to that in just a minute. Hello, Bill. Welcome back. Yes, thanks, uh, everybody, for listening. Um, the, uh, some of the issues when we talk about them, they think that we kind of sit around 23 hours a day kind of dreaming up bizarre things to tell people when, in fact, uh, we're trying to boil it down to the point where it doesn't seem either too technical or too outlandish. But the fact is, reality is even more bizarre than we can think up. Uh, for exactly. example, the amount of radiation that's being released is astronomical. I mean, uh, we literally have a situation now where the singing birds around Japan are dying, the ocean's dying nearby. They're talking about literally putting concrete to the bottom of the ocean. The cesium, people need to understand what cesium is and how long it lasts. We're talking about uh, these strontium and cesium last hundreds of years and significantly bioaccumulate. So people say, well, I can't see it yet. Well, just wait a while. It's almost like uh, one of the... Uh, joke they heard many years ago about being eaten by ducks. They don't have teeth, but if they bite <laughs> long enough, they'll eat you. <laughs> That's good. I like that. All yeah. right, let, let me bring up one thing that continually amazes people. They don't understand. These, these crummy, crappy, lousy GE Mark I reactors, of which we have 27 or 23. I can't remember which. I think it's actually around. around, I think you're in the ballpark. It's around 25, 26. Yeah, it's And these, these reactors, by the way, they did re-engineer what's called a wet well. Instead of the full engineering, they did it in Japan. But there's mm -hmm. so many defects in this mm -hmm. design mm -hmm. that it is basically if it goes in a hot shutdown, it's not only going to vent, it's very right. likely going to blow parts of the reactor and lose containment very quickly. Well, it did. Now, here's, here's the story. In uh, Brown's Ferry, one accident sequence analysis, this goes back to 1981, showed that a, a melted core in a Mark I reactor, you know, you've got the, the, the actual reactor vessel, then you have the containment vessel around it, and at the bottom of the containment vessel is a nice thick piece of concrete. Well, it turns out that the corium, that's what the reactor core becomes when it falls apart and drops to the bottom of the reactor and goes nuclear, it becomes a corium. Well, it works its way through the reactor base, and then it hits the containment. Well, it seems to be quite adept at eating concrete. It actually ate its way through 18 inches of concrete per hour and breached the entire concrete layer below the reactor in a total of 15 hours. That was in 1981 in one uh, accident sequence analysis. So we can pretty well take to the bank bill that all three of those melted down, melted through cores, the coriums, ate their way right through that concrete. Remember, uh, 18 inches an hour. What's going to stop it? Nothing. So now right. we probably have three corium below what used to be a containment vessel in a crappy Mark I building, down into the subsoil, maybe 60, 80, 100 feet. Nobody knows. We do know there's gas coming up, steam from the ground, from crevices and cracks in the ground. It's a dead giveaway of what's going on there. Here's, here's TEPCO. Now, get this one. I don't, you probably know this, but TEPCO is so concerned, ladies and gentlemen, about trying to do something there. Of course, they know they can't, and that's the uh, bottom line here, that every weekend, everybody goes home. There's nobody working on the weekends. Let's go home, have a few hits Actually, on... Actually, it's a movie set. You know, it's like the Old West, only these are there you nuclear go. reactors, actually a toxic nuclear waste site. And they go home because there's nothing that they are doing during the week, and right. nothing is going to happen on nope. the weekend. Just spraying water. Right. It's it's disgusting. 18 inches an hour. Think yeah. about that. 18 inches an hour, and it it's gone, folks. It's well, through. I can tell you a, a couple of chemical and physical reasons why it would go so fast. The first is the aquarium is going to be very hot. Number one, and you got to remember water, in 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 the form of a paracrystalline solid which is actually a liquid, believe it or not, technically. Concrete is news not now. A More system. underground booms were hurting... It's called a paracrystalline liquid. It just moves very slowly. So for concrete, it moves over centuries rather than over 
date. And the problem is that it's made primarily of water and a paracrystalline structure. And so if you heat it up, number one, it's going to vaporize. And number two, if you insert neutrons, you change the paracrystalline structure. You break down that crystal structure that holds the water and the other constituents together in this paracrystalline structure. So it's, it's like the metal. You get not just a metal fatigue, it literally becomes like flaky pie crust. And uh, the, the radiation levels I mentioned before is like a spider's web. It literally sends, you know, if you've ever seen these, uh, these uh, volcanic tubes like in Hawaii, and you can walk through some of them really high. They can go for miles. And they can go out under the ocean for miles as well. So what we're seeing here is uh, these coriums are building up the hydrovolcanic steam that's like a chamber. And then it spurts out basically in a sense of hydrovolcanic superheated steam. It's loaded with tritium and radioisotopes. And it can go miles out into the ocean floor. It can go miles in any direction it wants. And it can follow fault lines or weaknesses in the rock. It can basically get into water tables. It's amazing how far it can go. It can get into tunnels, for example, for the tube trains in Japan, which is why I predicted many months ago that this was going to cause radioactivity to get into the tube systems in Japan. And, of course, these, these trains act like a piston pushing the air through the tube trains. So it pushes the air up through the, the vents and the roadways all through Tokyo. And then it causes, of course, now they've, they decided rather than having rumors, they're going to burn the trash everywhere and export the food everywhere, so they're going to get rid of rumors. In other words, you can't have one group of Japanese not getting sick. If everybody gets sick, well, it can't be Fukushima. It's crazy, eh? Hello, hello. Yeah. Okay, we're here. You there? Yeah. Okay, we, we got disconnected there. We'll call him right back in just a sec and get him on the phone. What I was going to tell you, and I, I've mentioned this before, so forgive me for the repetition, because it is something that the American mind just cannot wrap itself around. And it has to do with the idea of the Japanese culture being extraordinarily discipline-oriented. I mean, these people will, will do what they're told, and they, they really do believe in, in thinking as one. And you can call it a hive mentality if, if you want, whatever you want. But it is, uh, it's an unusual thing. Americans don't think this way. Hi, Bill. Yeah, I guess we must have been saying something that they, the powers that be didn't want said. Uh, well, they, the main... they, a lot of strange things going on. What I was, I was going to make a point, but why don't you go ahead and finish yours? Yeah, I think that what we really need to understand is that the rate, level of radiation is going to continue rising. That Tokyo is basically toast. And you have to wonder, what's the psychology or psychopathy that's going on in the Japanese population that they would export this? They would have young girls... For example, going in there to eat. Food oh, I can't right believe around. that. I can't so they believe would it. Export oh. these, uh, this hundreds of millions of tons, and to these high temperature reactors to burn it, and then vent it not only over Japan but eastward over the Pacific Ocean and over us. This is a uh, international crime. So, you know, people say, "Oh, you're just exaggerating." No, we're not exaggerating. In fact, we're probably underestimating how bad this is. Now. I tell people there are things you can do to reduce your load. What happens is every day you're exposed to ground radiation and toxic chemicals, and your body, when it gets damaged, mitochondria and organelles, if you replace it, you're fine. There's survivors of not getting stuck in Hiroshima that are still alive. Now, there are many people that died within weeks or months afterwards, but the people that survived, number one, they had things like miso soup and seaweed and other supplements that they took, and they detoxed. And no, they, they, can't, they can't do that anymore because those things are now toxic. Right. And the problem is, you see, that most people aren't aware that the, the ocean currents don't just go eastward toward America and Alaska and down through the coast of Baja, California. They also go westward toward China and toward Hong Kong. So within a matter of a week or two, 22 provinces in China reported radioactive tritium and other radioisotopes showing up over China. The... Uh, the situation is really over the top. And the fact that nothing's being done, you have to say, well, why do they want to do this? Well, firstly, the Chinese ruling elite communists really don't care if they lose two or three hundred million people. They just want to have economic prescience over the planet. They want to survive whatever's coming. And they really don't care. What, what are the Japanese doing? Well, what the Japanese were doing at Fukushima is they're actually doing several things. Firstly, they should never have had nuclear reactors sitting 
in Earthquake Central, which is Japan. They had enough geothermal energy, wave energy, and wind energy, especially in northern Japan. They never needed nuclear reactors in the first place. Well, you know, that's been proven now. Uh, we have to take a break, but that's been proven because all but five of the reactors are shut down now, and Japan is, is, is doing quite well. Uh, they never needed them. You're right. Right. They oh, never well. needed them. And, of course, they, they're building them here. They built two new reactors in Georgia, and we have uh, Lindsey Graham in South Carolina pushing for the MOX reactor to turn all of our nuclear reactors in America, or a lot of them, including these old Mark I reactors, to upgrade them into MOX reactors, which are 40,000 times more dangerous. We run out of words to describe the psychopathy of these people. Yeah. It's just, we just, I, I, can't, I can't adequately describe them. They're the thing that gets me, Bill, about the Japanese culture is that these people essentially are docile. They are not standing up. There have been demonstrations, but they've been small, and they've been just groomed away by the media, which is compliant and complicit, totally complicit with TEPCO. Now, what's happening here is there was a lot, and there is a lot of talk in Japan about which areas are safe in, uh, in and around uh, Tokyo, which areas aren't. The island of Honshu itself, is, there's kind of a, a competition going be, between municipalities as to where the safer areas are. They're, they're making money. They're, you know, they're positioning themselves. Well, the Japanese government has decided that in order to stop the rumors of safe zones on Honshu, they are literally going to force every municipality to receive radioactive debris, which is going to be burned in every municipality's incinerators that they use for burning home household, garbage, and trash. That means every municipality, town, village, city, is going to be covered with radiation. So nobody will be able to say that they're safer than their neighbors. This is beyond belief. I call it self-genocide. Well, maybe they're all transhumanists, and they expect that the Japanese will no longer be born in utero in a healthy My Japanese young woman, but born in a lab after genetic screening. Now, we have to raise different questions to think, are these people crazy? Or have they got a completely different agenda? Not the masses, because they've lived under the shogun. And Asian cultures, in general, have had a ruling class that's a very, how can I say it, uh, extremely dominant, let's put it that way. So right. that's why we have chopsticks. Right. People say, what's the story about chopsticks? Well, one of the early dynasties in, in China invented chopsticks because the uh, emperor didn't want to have anybody in the lower classes that had knives. Because people didn't have forks and knives mm -hmm, and spoons, mm -hmm. they had a knife. They mm -hmm. cut their food or meat or whatever and eat it with a knife. Mm -hmm. And so chopsticks came out of that. Pretty hard yeah. to attack them with a chopstick. Interesting. Well, it unless you're special it's... forces and you're yeah, I, I was going to say unless you black belt and chopstick. Yeah, made of <laughs> uh, made of some kind of titanium and pretty damn the sharp. Titanium the chopstick. Yeah, like, right through you. Yeah. yeah. Now, just to summarize, what's going on in Tepco is. We're going to see hydrovolcanic explosions, and the way we're going to see it is not, you know, visually. We're going to see number one, northern lights, where the xenon-133 causes more green light flashes, and so on. Mm -hmm. But we're going to see radiation surges. We're not getting reporting. That's why when we have people like Michael Collins on, myself, and I'm constantly looking at my radiation detector. And since the San Onofre reactor burned out, which was after that hot shutdown, uh, our background radiation drops into the low to mid-20s most of the time, and then it waves, there's waves of radiation that comes through, and it goes back up. When it rained the last four days here in Southern California, mm -hmm. radiation was running back again three times background. And was it, was it triple background? Triple background. And what mm -hmm. happens is that's known in the lingo. If when we move radioactive waste, like from the Highway 93 out of Colorado, heading down to Texas to dispose of it uh, through a liquid radioactive tanker, if it's three times background, it's going to be shut down and it's considered a hazardous waste site. It's a hazmat, absolutely. It's a 